Greetings, everyone. Pastor Chris with you once again for another midweek Bible devotional. I hope you're doing well. And I also hope that these have been a blessing to you, they've been, that, that they've been helpful for you in your walk with the Lord, and that they're able to uh, deepen your faith in Him, especially as we, we, we sit at His feet and we open His Word and we hear from Him and from His Word. Uh, this week we'll be looking at uh, the 17th chapter of John, John chapter 17. So if you don't have your Bible with you, go grab it, pause the video, go grab your Bible, and we'll, uh, we'll take a look at it. John 17, I, I like to call the Lord's Prayer um, because it really is him praying to God. And, and we get to, to, to have the, the honor and the privilege of sitting with the disciples and hearing this prayer. Yeah, I know the Our Father is what we call the Lord's Prayer. And uh, it's, it's a set of directions that Jesus gave to the disciples when they asked him how to pray. But this one is the Lord's Prayer. He's praying to God the Father. Um, and he prays for his disciples, and then later on, by extension, he prays for the church by, by saying that he's praying for those who would believe in their word, the word of the, the disciples, and that's in verse 20. Now, we're not going to read the whole, the whole chapter. We're just going to talk about this idea of knowing, an idea of knowledge that runs throughout the prayer. Uh, in fact, the word know or a form of it appears nine times in this prayer. So it, it's clearly uh, an important point that Jesus is praying about. Um, the word for, for to know or, or, or the, the knowledge that he's talking about here it is more than just like book smarts or, or just being acquainted with something. It really is knowing something or someone in a real deep sense. So, so that is really what's, what's woven throughout this prayer. Uh, we'll begin in verse 3, where Jesus says that um, this is eternal life, that they know you and Jesus Christ whom you sent. Now, I almost like to, when I see Jesus Christ, I almost like to say Jesus the Christ, Jesus the Savior, Jesus the Messiah. So Jesus is praying that they, in this case right now, he's talking about his disciples, and again, by extension, the church, that they would know God and know his son whom God sent. But this is eternal life. So the question, of course, a very important question is how then can we know him? How do we know him? Uh, well, the first thing Jesus says here is, I've made your name known to them. Now, the them he's talking about in this verse is his disciples. I've made your name known to them. He says this twice. He says it in verse 6 at the beginning of the prayer and verse 26 at the end. So it's kind of like a set of parentheses around the prayer, right? When you, in Scripture, when you encounter the idea of a name, um, the name of a person kind of kind of um, encapsulates their, their um, attributes and their characteristics. It's kind of summarized in a name. So in God's case... Uh, we're talking names like Elohim, which is the supreme, the supreme uh, of sovereign God, uh, Jehovah, Yahweh, the Lord the, the, that, that we often refer to in the Old Testament. We see the word Lord capitalized. That's Yahweh. So it, it's the lordship of God, um, Adonai, or God the Father, uh, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So, so these are these are names of God. There's many, many names of God throughout throughout Scripture. So Jesus says here, "I've made your name, I've made your characteristics, attributes, all there is to know about you. I've made your name known to them. Everything is summarized in the name. He's made known to them, and of course, by extension, to the church. But you'll notice he says, "I've made your name known. I've done it. He's done it already. And interestingly, even further, he says, "If you've seen me." you've seen the Father. So he truly has, in his ministry here on earth, has revealed God, certainly to his disciples, and again, through their word to the church. He also makes this a continuing act. In verse 26, he says, I will make it known. I will make your name known. So kind of like it's, it's a continuing, ongoing act that Jesus will do. He'll continue to reveal the attributes and glory and characteristic of God. He'll continue to do that with the church. The, the second thing he says, um, and now we're going to look in verse 25. Now, the reason why we're kind of bouncing around is, is John has a tendency to, to write circular. It's a circular writing. So, so we kind of have to straighten that out so we can, we can understand it in our linear heads. So, so another thing Jesus says here is, I know you. He's speaking to God. He knows God. He knows all the attributes and characteristics of God. 
Well, why is, how is that? Well, because he's one with the Father. And he says that in verse 21. He is one with the Father. So he has made God known because he's one with the Father. And he'll continue to do this because God's infinite how do we know everything there is to know about God, right? So he has to continue making these things known. Um, And if you think about it, Jesus knows him, right? He knows God because they are one. He says that. So he knows God in this infinite sense. He knows the infinite nature of God. Now he goes on and he says, I in them. Now he's talking about himself in the disciples, in the church he's i in the church all those who would believe through them and he says and you in me god in me so i in them you in me so we've got this connection here between jesus and god and the church so if jesus is in the church you and me we're the church through our faith in him and god and jesus are one then the church you and me are in him we're all in him. So we get this sense of unity between God and the Son and the church. And of course, by extension there too, the Trinity. The Trinity is one. The Holy Spirit is one with them. The Holy Spirit is in our hearts. So there's unity there as well. So the Holy Spirit's in the church. He's in you and me. Jesus is in us. We're in him. It's all one. It's all this one. This, this concept of unity. We are in Christ and he is in us. Now, we can easily see that, that, that this knowing, now again, that, again, being in someone and them being in you, this knowing, it's not just a mental ascent. It's not just, just uh, an acquaintance with Jesus or knowing something about Jesus, kind of like we would know about a, a sports figure. You know, we know all their stats, but we don't know them. We just know about them. But in this case, Jesus is talking about knowing God and knowing him so it's it's in the sense of a close relationship again we're in jesus now in our case if we think of um, the various relationships that are in our lives you know if you're married a married couple well they, they know each other but of course they continue to learn more about each other so they know each other more and more as each day goes by the same thing happens between parents and children right as, as parents as our children's grow we, we know more about them and of course they know more about us as time goes by this is an ongoing thing it's a relationship even with friends you have a a close friend or friends and you know them and as you spend more time with them you get to know them even more so when we're we're in a relationship we want to know the other person better especially if it's a loving relationship we want to know the person better we want to be closer with them by extension, the relationship that we, the church, have with Jesus is, and this is biblical, we're his bride. We're the bride of Christ. The church is the bride of Christ. And that it means that it's, that it's rooted in love. It's a beautiful relationship. So it's rooted in love. And he demonstrated his love for us first, <laughs> that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So that's the relationship we have. That's the love that he has for us. And of course, our response to that in in receiving that salvation, that gift of salvation, of faith and salvation, we love him back. So we have this loving relationship with him. Jesus loves you and you love him. So the question is, wouldn't you want to know him more? Wouldn't you want to draw closer to him? Wouldn't you, you know, that you're in him, you, you want to uh, get closer to him? And of course, that's natural. You know, when we love each other, you want to go, you know, get closer with whoever it is. It, it's really the root of intimacy when you think about it. So how, how do we do that? Well, you, you talk to any marriage counselor and they'll tell you the same thing. It's communication. It's through communication. That's the basis of any relationship. Talking with each other, listening to each other, but we don't do it as a task. I mean, you, you don't pick up the phone and, and, and call a friend and talk and chat and just check it off. Say, oh, I called my friend today. And you certainly don't do it with your spouse. You don't just sit there and, and have a conversation and then just say, oh, okay, I did that today. I can check that off. Of course not. This is a deep-rooted desire to know the person better. So we listen to them, right? When we, we have a conversation with someone, we communicate with someone, we listen to them. We speak to them. 
we share things. We think about what they say. And, and, and we, we empathize with their feelings and their concerns and their, 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 their joys and their hurts. That's a relationship. That's a communication with a rela- in a relationship. So how do we do that with Jesus then? How do we know Jesus in that way and communicate with him that way? Well, the, the first thing is we, we pray. We pray. And in our prayer, we praise him. We worship him. We adore him. We, we express our love for him. We can also present our needs and our concerns before him. Now think about it. Certainly in a marriage, and even with, with close friends, we do the same thing. Like, you know, we, we, of course, we compliment each other, right? In a marriage, we, we, we tell each other how much we love each other. And also, if there's a concern or a need or a hurt, we share it. And if they share with us, we try to help them, right? So this is communication. This is what we do in prayer. But also we listen. We listen. Now, how do we listen to Jesus? Well, the first thing is he said that we would learn through them, through their word, through the disciples' words. So therefore, we spend time in his word like we're doing right now. We're in the Gospel of John. We read the Gospels. We read the epistles that the disciples, the apostles wrote for us. We read the Old Testament where Jesus is revealed and we learn more about God through all of that. We see what God's done, how God's revealed and shown his everlasting love and steadfast faithfulness. So that's really how you, how you hear and follow him. We're in his word. We meditate on his word. We, 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 we think about his word. And that's how we draw closer to him. It's not just a book. You know, the Bible is not just any old book. It's the word of God and it's living and breathing. It convicts us, right? We, it, it instructs us, but it also reveals God to us. We see even more and more and more of him as we spend more time in scripture. And when we do that, we, when we spend time in, in, the, in the word of God, uh, again, it's not something we do and check off. We don't say, okay, I prayed today, check. And, oh, I read uh, three chapters today, check. No, 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 no. We, we, we enter in, we pray expecting to hear from him, expecting some sort of an answer from him if we're asking for something. And also when we're in his word, you know, we, we stop, we pause, we meditate, we write notes, we, 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 we think about what we just read. We journal, and that, that's, that's an important thing. I know, no, I'm not good at it, and I know there's a lot of people that, that, that don't really journal that much. Um, I knew somebody in, in a previous church, lovely lady, who um, her journal uh, w- was literally a, a work of art. She had sections where, like, whatever her prayer needs were, she would write down, um, and and whatever she, when she was studying scripture, like anything that, that that God revealed to her through scripture, whatever was illuminated to her, she would write these notes down. Um, questions that she had, she'd scribble into her journal. But the prayer part of her journal was amazing. If there's someone she had to pray for, she would put them in, their needs in, by name, into her journal. And then when the prayer was answered, she went back and wrote down when and how that prayer was answered. So it was, what an amazing book this was to look at. It was just just incredible. Um, so these are things we can do, again, to, to for our communication with Jesus, for our relationship with Jesus, to deepen. Uh, it's about you know, wanting to know him. Another thing I thought about as, as I was thinking, how can we know him? Well, again, think of the relationships we're in. We should live our lives as if Jesus is right by our side because he is. So think of, the, think of live your life as if he's seated next to you, as if he's driving with you, um, as if he's walking with you. Maybe as if he's watching TV with you or he's scrolling on the computer with you. Live as if he's, live, as if he's seated right next to you. Um, that, <laughs> that can certainly kind of uh, impact <laughs> what, what we're going to do in life, right? <laughs> if you're, you know, if you're, before you get on the computer, just remember Jesus is there with you. What, through the Holy Spirit in you, he's watching. He's, he's on the same website you're on right there with you. So, so we have to live our lives knowing that he is in us. He says it in this passage, he is in us and we in him. And that, when we go to the beginning of the prayer, is eternal life. That's eternal life, being in him. Now think about this. That's eternal life now because in glory, you will be in him and he will be you in you and you will be in his presence 
forever. So really, that this is like the, the, the preview to eternal life, to being in him here and now and being in his word and being in prayer and, and, and thinking about him, meditating on him and living our lives as if the Lord is sitting right next to us. So, so really, I think to summarize this whole idea of knowing Jesus, it's, it's to seek to build that relationship with him, to deepen that knowledge of him, to deepen our love for him because we want to be with the one who loves us. And he loves us in a way that is beyond anything we can possibly imagine. So that's how you can know him. And he says in the beginning, this is eternal life, that we would know him. So I hope that was uh, encouraging for you today. And um, uh, let, me just, let me just pray for us. Heavenly Father, we, uh, we thank you for your word. Uh, we thank you that your word contains you and, and all there is to know about you. Uh, we know, Lord, you're infinite, and we know that our finite minds will never fully comprehend um, just how magnificent and glorious you are. But we thank you that you have revealed yourself to us in a way that we can uh, walk with you and, and, and our faith and our love for you can deepen every day. And we pray, Lord, that we commit to that and that we keep our side of the relationship and that we um, seek to, to communicate more with you and grow closer to you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So, amen. And I hope this, again, this was encouraging for you. Um, if you are in the Connecticut area, in the Collinsville, Connecticut area, and would love to come worship with us, we would love to have you come with us. It's uh, Sunday mornings, 10 a.m. at Christ Community Church in Collinsville, Connecticut. And if not, if you're not able to do that, well, if you're watching this, you're seeing us on our YouTube channel. We, we do have a live stream of our services. Again, it goes on at 10 a.m. on Sunday mornings at, at Eastern time, if you're not in our, our uh, time zone. And um, you can comment, you can, you can leave um, uh, prayer requests, things like that online, and we would love to have you be part of our, our fellowship and part of our congregation. Um, also, with this video, I'd love to have you uh, share it if it encouraged you, and also leave some, leave some comments down below and, uh, so we can keep the, the conversation going about this. But uh, John 17, take some time to read the whole chapter and um, just let it all kind of uh, marinate <laughs> in your soul. So again, I hope this was a blessing for you, and until next time, be a blessing.